We have uh, Kevin and Megan and Becca joining us tonight. Waiting on over there. So uh, you are on. So whoever would like, Kevin, you have the floor. Or Megan, or Becca. But you're on mute. Can they unmute themselves? You're on mute. Okay. Hey, Megan, we, uh, it's great seeing you. Uh, if you can unmute yourself, we can hear you. She can't. Yes, it's already clicked. It is on click. So. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Yay. I bet my husband wishes he had a mute button on me sometimes. <laughs> All Hello. Right. <laughs> all right. Everyone all right over there? Yes. Yes, here we are. All right. So before I get started, good evening. Um, the Myron ISG team was in Washburn on Monday night to work with the Long Range Planning Committee to review options and get feedback. And that's what we'll present tonight. Um, so we'll spend about 10 to 15 minutes going through this. Um, so I'll start off real quickly just on the what we've learned and then Kevin will spend majority of this going through a couple different options and then we'll wrap up with next steps. So I will share my screen right now. All right, there we go. So again, what we've learned, future considerations and next steps. Um, this is a slide that you've seen before. This is where we are in that master planning process. Right now, we're developing options and scope. And we would move into community engagement next. So what we've learned, um, again, we did a permission to proceed survey in the fall, and we did two survey mailings because um, the third party survey company that facilitated the mailing ended up missing a section. It was an error in grabbing the data or grabbing the addresses. Therefore, there was two mailings and overall there is support. So this doc or this um, chart we see right here shows that overall there were 518 participants, which meets the um, statistical number needed for a predictive date for predictive data. And we see that 58% of your non-parents, non-staff are interested in learning more about what could be done in the district. The district, so Tom um, ran some numbers to kind of frame ref, to frame the thought process around how much would a project cost taxpayers of Washburn. So right now he's using a 6% interest rate. Again, that's um, conservative for today's times. Um, but looking at what a $46 million project would cost down to a $25 million project and what the impact on the mill rate increase. So that means that at $46 million, a $46 million project would increase the taxes $7.27 to the mill rate, meaning for every $100,000 of property, a $725 increase. So that was the highest number we ran, 46 going down to 25, something a little bit more palatable. The mill rate increase was $3.90 or $3.94. So out of a $100,000 property, anticipating $394 um, dollars a year. Again, this is something that was conservative to frame our thought process and um, to guide next steps. Where are you in comparison to your neighbors? This and I'm running through this quickly so we can spend more time on the options, but this PowerPoint, uh, Tom and Ivy have, and they can share it with the board um, afterwards. But right now you're at $5.81. And how does that compare on your mail rate? How does that compare overall the state? It stays at $7.22. And in your, in your neighbors, you're kind of in the middle. All right, so Kevin will spend some time talking about the the meat of this presentation or the, where the district could go, that master planning options. All right. So I'm gonna jump to this. Uh, what we did since we were last with uh, the, the work that we did in um, kind of late spring of 2023, uh, was we put together uh, kind of the wish list of all the things we could do 
with the current secondary building um, and also considered a what is how does a new building compare to that um, and and really what as um, the Tom and the team started to look at the tax impacts and debt capacity um, that's really where that new building concept of even um, I think when we even looked at a scenario of just making it a, a new high school, even that alone uh, really pushed up against that debt limit capacity, much less um, would voters be um, acceptable to the to the tax impact. So what we want to do is look at some, uh, some more options within your current facility. <clears throat> and so what we've done here is laid out five scenarios or five options, we call them. So first one, um, Megan, if you want to jump to that. The first one is um, it, we can actually, Megan, let's go to, yeah, perfect. Option one, this looks at all your capital maintenance. So this says, hey, let's take the building that we have, uh, refresh all the needs. So the immediate, roughly when, when we had gone through this and, and prioritize this, um, all the facility assessment needs from HVAC to code compliance for um, like accessibility to doors and windows, um, to roofing, <clears throat> to parking lots and such. Roughly $21.5 million, $21 million there. Emerging needs of just under $5 million and future needs of approximately 500000 So um, what that gets you, that option one gets you is a refresh and updated building, but what it doesn't get you is um, a reconfigured secure entrance or reconfigured spaces. So a lot of your spaces would function better than they are now, um, but they, as far as refreshed and better HVAC and such, but they wouldn't function any differently than you have now. So Megan, if you want to jump to option two. So option two, um, this is where we said, hey, what if we said, let's look at just doing immediate um, capital maintenance needs. So that's the $21.5 million. And then what if we just looked at scaling back our renovations and additions and what if we just did the secure entrance addition to the secondary building? So again, if you think back, um, some of the early tax impacts that the district looked at, um, this is just under that smallest dollar figure that the district, that scenario the district has ran of $25 million. This one's approximately $24 million. But again, you're not getting any of those other um, additions or renovations that we had studied last year. So option three, uh, what this does is that same exact thing. So um, immediate needs um, at the secondary building, um, <clears throat> but then this one does an elementary secure entrance. So this is something that the leadership team uh, brought up to us here um, uh, relatively recently. And we wanted to study and say, hey, if we were to look at a secure entrance at the secondary building, we should also at least do an option to look at the cost of doing one at the elementary building. And so this little plan uh, on the bottom right here shows how we would, um, it's kind of hard to see, but at the main entrance, just to the right of the main entrance, there's two classrooms there or two rooms. We would take those rooms and convert those into the office area. The existing office area would then be converted into two classrooms. So it's kind of a swap of spaces. And then we could have the proper secure entrance flow into the office area, check um, visitors in before they go into the rest of the building. So we wanted to provide that as an option. I think and one thing to add was that on Monday night when the team shared this option, we actually shared with the Long Range Planning Committee, we shared an option that looked at an addition onto this building. Um, and we were encouraged to look at some two less expensive alternatives. And so therefore we had this on the back burner. The renovation was about a million dollars less. So option four, um, what this does is, is what you see here is those immediate needs are lower. So you see at $13.8 million. So what's the difference? Well, we'll slide here a little bit later on. Oh, we, yep. Okay. That's fine, Megan. Let's, let's jump to that and then we'll come back. What we said is we said, hey, that 21 roughly million dollars of facility maintenance or capital maintenance, that's a lot. Let's maybe relook at this, some of those things. Is there some of those items that we could say, hey, let's maybe take those out of that um, immediate need 
and some of them could be addressed later on down the road. Um, we also recognize that the district has put a lot of dollars into the facilities over the years. And so there is history showing that you have been able to bite off pieces of, of facility needs over time. So what you see here in um, these gray items are ones that we said, hey, let's at least pull these out and um, say either uh, things like uh, like carpet and laminate floor replacement. Those are things that uh, a lot of districts can take on or as summer projects as they can kind of fit them into the budget. Um, and then there's other ones like the restroom accessibility. We pull it out of this, um, recognizing that maybe we just want to put it into an option and say, let's just pull out a capital maintenance, but we may still want to consider accessibility improvements and updates um, independently on their own, if that makes sense. So we we just wanted to say, kind of reassess this a little bit um, and pull some of those things out. So what you see here so is this So for example, looks, oh, to, just to interject quick, um, so like this would not remove restrooms completely. And Kevin will talk about how these are strategically placed. So when you look at that 21 million that went down to 13 million, some of them were suggesting to just remove and table like the flooring and others moved into this master planning. So we've removed that almost deduction of cost. Sorry, Kevin. Yep. Nope, you're good. So Megan, if you wanna go back to the uh, one that kind of did the overview of option four. Yep, so here, this is where you see that immediate needs of approximately $13.8 million, and then middle school, high school building improvements of approximately $7.7 .7 million, with a total of $21.5 million for this scenario. And then Megan, if you wanna to jump to that plan. Yeah, so this is great. What this shows you is for that, um, the, the capital maintenance aside for the roughly $13.8 million, that $7.7 .7 million of building improvements, it's um, that includes a secure entrance addition and renovation, and where it does show those toilet room remodels um, on the lower level here, and then refreshing the locker rooms. And then on the upper, I should say on the second floor, uh, we're refreshing and updating the counseling space, which is the current off high school office, I believe, um, the wellness area the Family Consumer Science Lab as well, staff workroom. Um, and then one thing that we that we had studied and said, hey, if we can't build new locker rooms, we tried to come up with a way to provide a third locker room on this level so that it would be fully accessible. So we said um, something to consider um, is taking the existing tech ed classroom, converting that into a locker room. Uh, we'd want to update the tech ed lab because then we're gonna have tables um, and that's gonna be uh, a learning space as well. One of the suggestions Monday night was we might wanna look at a kind of a wall separation between uh, that uh, out in that tech ed lab. So we could have more of a clean side and more of think of like a dirty or um, equipment heavy side. So that was just an idea. We'd still wanna be able to keep supervision through. What would that locker room get you? That would get you in a locker room that is on your is that is on your same level as your gym. So you'd have a locker room that is fully accessible. Um, so it'd have showers, it'd have uh, toilet um, uh, toilet stalls in it as well. Um, and so then you would have a one locker room that would be fully accessible. Um, it would be more than just a team locker room. Probably we'd have PE lockers, a combination of PE lockers in there as well. So you could really utilize it. However. Um, that would be needed. Option five is that exact same scenario, except now we're adding that elementary secure entrance into this scenario. So you see that uh, second from the bottom line item, elementary secure entrance for $1.3 million, renovating and kind of moving that office up to the front uh, into the existing space. So this scenario uh, would be up to just under $23 million. So as a quick summary here, um, these are five scenarios that uh, we kind of came up with within kind of the grander concept that we have put together last year of some scenarios to consider. Um, the option one, the where you're just focus on the capital maintenance. Um, then you have two that really does capital maintenance and secure entrance. Three is, is 
capital maintenance, secure entrance at both buildings. <clears throat> and now option four is less capital maintenance and then more building improvements at the middle, at the secondary building. And option five is that less, the less capital maintenance and building improvements at the secondary plus the elementary secure entrance. So we kind of gave you a wide variety of cost ranges here um, to just give you some more options to consider and give your community some, some options to consider. So where do we go from here? Um, we, are, we went through the list of capital maintenance deducts and that was something that the Myron ISG team did. We'd like to sit down with Homer and the administrative team just to make sure that um, everyone is agreeing with what, we, what we're proposing right now and that 13.8 that reduced capital maintenance scope. So that'd be next. Um, and then we would recommend validating confirming tax impacts. And so it's typical in this, in this process to bring in a third party to validate that. Um, and they can usually come up with some creative financing solutions that minimize, they look at minimize impact to taxpayers. So right now we're running that 6% scenario at 394 um, at the 25 and hopes that if another, if we reevaluate and look at a creative way, they may be able to minimize that impact to your residents. We will work with school perceptions to kick off the next survey. So the first one was that permission to proceed. This next would be a facilities assessment master planning. So allowing the district to, or sorry, allowing the district residents to provide feedback on these options or um, option that we choose to put forward with that. So, and our plan is to work um, again with the district leadership team to figure out what we're, what um, that survey looks like along with that third party school perceptions and share it with the long range planning committee and the school board in April. And then if approved, move forward with having that survey land in the mailboxes of residents in May, getting results back in 2020 or summer of 2024. So we try to get in within our 15 minute window here at 6.17, um, questions for us. Megan, before, as you're formulating questions, just um, as those things were removed in that price where the capital improvements came down, we will also be updating our tenure plan to see when those things could then be done internal. So some of the things that are coming out to get that number down, we then would update our tenure plan for the floor and the painting furniture, cabinets, things of that nature that would update that. Because we're basically, we've exhausted our tenure plan now. We've got to the point that this was necessary to study. As these come off, we'll add those into the tenure plan. So they will be covered, just in a different way. That's a great point, Tom. Again, with those emerging and those future needs as well. So that would then trickle into the tenure. It is very common for a district to go through this process, identify all the needs, and then start to prioritize what the taxpayers can support at that time. So they'll move forward with a chunk of that prioritized needs or a segment of that. And then the additional goes into the master plan, long range master plan. And then um, the district can chip away at that year after year if money is available. So strategically, that's what Kevin said we made the deduct of that down to that 13.8 million for things that could be uh, updated without tearing apart walls and things like that. Question. I guess this maybe isn't the appropriate oh, place to now, ask a question. Phone, but, notification, um, calendar, 19 minutes ago, calendar, upcoming event. These were already in our kind of existing 10 year plan, maintenance plan. So can you say that again, Tina? Were any of, like, they identified immediate needs, emerging needs, and future needs. Then we came up with the capital and maintenance reprioritization, you know, that, mm -hmm. and my question is, are any of the emergency needs or those or emerging needs, are those already identified and put into our like existing tenure plan from carpet, tile, painting, furniture, those are all things that we take bits and pieces and rotate mm -hmm. around through the building to update that as an on an basis. So all of those things that are in there um, are already in the tenure plan. 
we have to adjust and look at some of the bigger ones. Yeah. Because there's X amount of dollars we can do a year, and that's something that long range planning prioritizes. Mm -hmm. Like right at the time of year, we'd be looking at okay, what are our summer projects? Yeah. What can we afford? Jan comes in, what's it one, what's it about 46? Yes. And then we'll set and set up the bid what's going to be in that. So okay. well, we'd have to re-identify the greatest ones <clears throat> all the way down to you know over 10 years. Yeah. Chip away. But we accomplished some great things, science labs, outdoor facilities, yeah. like robotics, high tunnel, bio sweat. Monarchs. So uh, we can still accomplish some really big ticket items. Yeah. So as they look at, at doing this, um, the construction pieces of it, those would be done during the summer months? Or would they would that have to be doing during the school year too? Or well, working through a few of these in my past, um, some are done year round, mm -hmm. and they just minimize the impact on certain things. But and Kevin and, and Megan um, chime in in terms of time of construction. Sometimes it's year round. Majority of adult because of where where we live would be in the summer months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say the majority of this would be summer. Um, one example I would say, though, is we worked with Barron Area School District in their middle school, um, and they had like two rooms that were kind of flex rooms in their building. And so we we're able to work kind of room by room. And they had staff that was like, yep, I'll move through the school year if I can get an updated space. So that's like the that's probably not the norm. Um, most of it would probably happen over the summer. But then if you do have some flexibility of spaces, you might be able to do a little bit of work. Uh, in some of the spaces during the school year. And a new addition, so like the secure entrance addition, that would take longer than one summer. So we would create a phasing plan that allowed for the district to continue to operate. We understand you're an educational facility, but um, reroute traffic and um, students so that we could build during the, during the year and then um, occupy that space as soon as possible. We've got a major electrical work on this building. They work through the day. Um, fire alarm systems, they work through the day. So are they just coming after all? So it's something that's possible. Noisy at times. And if, um, so that's always the first, one of the first priorities. So if the district chooses to go to referendum and the referendum passes, it's sitting down right away to understand okay, here's our preliminary plan. How can we phase construction to minimize the impact to you as a district? Because your first need is to educate students. So we'll sit down and understand what your summer school schedule is, what your bell schedule is, what classrooms you have available. Then we'll create a strategy that minimizes impact. So are there... Um looking at the, the needs that we have for our kids, the major building renovation needs are fit into these the plans? Based on the survey that we received back from staff and our input, uh, access and security were the top ones that were out there. Then when we started looking at those locker room space and other areas that really emerged. And then when we got into that $77 million on this footprint, auditoriums and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So a lot of staff input that went into what areas would be uh, impacted, but the driving force was to update the building, fix areas that need to be repaired, tuck pointing brickwork, windows, things of that nature, all the agencies in the building, and then the secure and accessibility for the driving force to find areas. So is there like change to any of the classroom? Classrooms or the classroom sizes or anything? Just, yeah, just the ones that were highlighted there. So okay. there would be an upgrade uh, in that one model there. Uh, council and office would move. <clears throat> the high school, middle school office would move down into that new, new secure area. The staff would have a new workroom. You'd have a new locker room up where the uh, high school, where the tech ed classroom is. Tech ed would be revamped on this floor. We have a mezzanine that's not to code, very nicely built, wonderful construction just not to code. So that would also be something that would be addressed. Um, I would, Tom, if I could, I'd also say what this doesn't show is 
um, a lot of those, um, like all of the classroom HVAC improvements. So HVAC, um, so heating and cooling systems would be replaced. And because of that, you end up replacing ceilings or if it's a newer ceiling, you remove and reinstall. Same thing with lighting. So there's a lot of improvements across those classroom spaces. It's just like not moving walls and changing those types of things. I think uh, uh, bathrooms on the cafeteria, another great lead that's mm -hmm. on the wall with rooms in the bathroom. So mm -hmm. those were the priority areas. Yeah, and one. I think we would really encourage the, it's like we did at the elementary school my first summer, a nice color scheme on the outside, <laughs> seal the building. So it looks like it matches. Mm -hmm. Megan, can you go to that list of facility needs? One thing that did come up on um, the very last item when we were talking uh, Monday night, uh, we didn't have this list Monday night, but I afterwards we really felt that this would be helpful just to for the for obviously the board um, and maybe as a follow up to the long range committee to understand some of those capital maintenance needs and what is in um, or or isn't in. Right, one of the things was saying. Hey, if we if we don't get an auditorium and we understand it's very expensive, can we at least look at um, stage lighting uh, improvements and dimming controls? And well, really, when we went back and looked, that's already part of that capital maintenance dollars of that thirteen point eight million dollars. So I think that's some of those things are going to be important. Of no, we may not um, get a brand new auditorium because of the cost of it, but there are things that we're doing to update and improve the spaces that we do have. Is that big enough for two classrooms where the office is now? Good it's just, question, yeah. It seems like it would be small, two yeah. small rooms. And long range planning, we also brought up the idea that we wouldn't necessarily want classrooms to move inside, keeping classrooms on the windows. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so right now with the repurposing, the model that was shown here, it would allow for two sections um, for every grade level from 4k through sixth grade mm -hmm. and it would also allow um, a couple flex classrooms that would either be used as intervention spaces or for like the third section on one of those off years um, and then for like I think this one was 1.3 I think the other one is just over 2 million and that would be an add-on so it wouldn't impact um, it would actually add more more room so it's a more expensive option but that was something also that Myrna showed us is what does it look like if it's actually an addition rather than repurposing those first two classrooms. And the daycare would still fit in there? Yes, the daycare will still fit in there. Mm -hmm. Yep. With the repurposing, that wouldn't change it at all. With the add-on, there's some flexibility for mm -hmm. extra classrooms. So the add-on would come out the front? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of where the big pavilion yeah, is right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that would be mostly then office space. Is that what you're, or, or classroom? Yep. So that would be office space with a secure entrance, two sets of doors. Mm -hmm. um, and then what was formerly the office would still be repurposed for classrooms, but then that, that would definitely be used as intervention spaces or extra spaces we use for flexible classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, and then it would have more classrooms along the outsides of the building like we currently have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it add, um, and I guess I'm thinking like the those two special ed rooms, which seem pretty small, is there a way to um, find space for that to either combine that into one room and then find another room someplace else or? In this building? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're already talking about Mm-hmm. It's not the best room in the Yeah, it's a small, it's small. And no windows is hard. Okay. Those are my questions. Anybody else have some questions? So if you do have any, uh, we're going to be working with them on the grid as well. And then between now and March, one more than the end, then we're going to have the financial people from the center. And then start putting it harder on the city of 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 the city
they're going to be sending this out to the community to get feedback from the community and what their tolerance would be for our referendum right away. On that. So would all of those options be sent out to the community? That would be up to us. I mean, do you want to do this one, this one? We would narrow it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And Megan, you can probably, I don't know if we would send or you would recommend sending all five. We'd probably narrow that down. That's, I would recommend narrowing it down, and that's when we'll get the survey consultant in School Perceptions, and they'll provide feedback on what they feel will give us the most reliable feedback from the community so you can make your decision. Um, and then before, we, before that survey is wrapped up, we definitely come to the Long Range Planning Committee and the board to make sure that you are in agreement with how the strategy is being laid out. Can you pull up that the calendar that you had on there before? The the calendar, the yeah. this one. Yep. Mm. Yes. So mm -hmm. I just noticed that my last bullet point here I forgot the V in survey. Uh, my bad, but I'll, I'll change that. I'll send the district an updated copy here. But yeah, so um, the goal is now to continue to work with, or to continue to work with the district leadership team to confirm our assumptions at the capital maintenance. And then we can move the rest of that into that 10 year long range plan. And then we'll get together with the survey company to start discussing strategy and figure out how we can best relay this information to the community to get clear, concise data back. Um, and then we'll share that with the board along the way. And if the board approves the survey, our goal is for it to land in mailboxes in May. And then the survey would be open for about two and a half weeks. And that'll take about two-ish weeks to get survey feedback. So we should be able to have survey results this summer yet. And if the board would like to go to referendum in November, just a reminder that you'd have the board has to adopt prior to the end of August. I believe the date is August 23rd, but it's right around the end of August there. So it's 70 days before the election. So we have a nice time to June, July review. Yeah. Focus in or take section in August and then get sent out to you post it. Hmm. I know this is a lot to digest today. So like I said, I'll make this one change here on the last bullet point, add the V to survey, uh, resend to Tom, and then he can distribute for the board to um, review again. And we are here to answer any questions, um, comments. Um, feel free to use us as a sounding board, provide feedback. And you are aware that we're getting a new administrator in. We heard, yes. I've been meeting with and talked to Denise. Okay. Shared all the information that we have about the project plan. And when she's available, she'll be joining us for bringing in the four various software plans. But now moving into the summer, so okay. she's on board with the Okay. I said for all the files on the information and the discussion as well. Okay. So she'll also have input. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that we're all on this transition it's, it's kind of a hard time to do both at the same time but if we're keeping her informed that's in it okay uh, my question is about the validating information from the tax impacts and um and this is i i guess we'll just know information we know information but i'm assuming our credit rating is going to be like very good it's pretty awesome um so do you have an inkling of how that might change, like some of the projected um, effects to the mill rate? Or, like, I mean, obviously, it's going to be like favorable than our conservative projections, but will that actually have an impact on what we can actually do? Okay. Not in yes. Just for the record. <laughs> we come up with what we think the community that sent us earlier has yeah. tax and tax tolerance, mm -hmm. and then you start. Final yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just kind of like I've been thinking about that because one percentage point significant impact on what you get. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. So I mean, we just threw out straight into the French and yep. we're yep. going to be looking at bonds. And yep. Yep. All that creative. I did like a bit of both creative financing. I got a little worried, but it's all like, yes. Well, you know, when we just financed the playground <laughs> and the rock, right? The um, they were very competitive in their business because mm -hmm. they were very much so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very yeah. Okay. Great things. When I thought we had the hard part over with the superintendent search, but no, no. right into the next right, step. Right into the next step. All right. Well, thank you for your the information tonight. Um, do we have any other questions for them while they're here? No. Okay. Well, thank you again. Hi, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye. Um, you now it is time for uh, public comment. If you would like to speak for public comment, each person has three minutes and it's their time alone and it cannot be passed on to someone else. If you have concerns or comments about individuals, those are not appropriate during public comment times. So please don't say anything that would identify circumstances or a person or a group of people directly by what you say. Be respectful. People on Zoom are welcome to join public comment. Please put your name in the chat if you would like to make a comment. Is there anyone here who would? Hello, can you hear me? Sure. Okay. Um, I'm Jewel Pickert and as I was watching this presentation, we were talking about three different locker rooms, if I got it right, and maybe some bathrooms and doing some work on there. My question is, are, uh, what is that going to look like? Is there going to be one locker room for boys and one locker room for girls or three locker rooms where each one, one is going to be for boys, one is going to be for girls, and is the same going to be for the bathrooms where they're going to be separate, one for boys, one for girls? And I would appreciate a specific answer at some point. Thank you. Armin? Hi, Charmaine Swan. I'm actually here a little bit with my work hat on tonight, so pr pretend I'm putting my work hat on, on. So if you don't know, I work for the American Lung Association. I coordinate uh, the Northwest Wisconsin Lung Health Alliance. I just wanted to give a little quick update. Um, we have been in partnership with UW Extension Superior Adventures, um, so Bayfield County, UW Extension, Bayfield County Public Health Department and um, the Washburn Club. We have been working on a pilot after school program specific for the sixth, seventh and eighth graders here in Washburn. And it's going really well. We've only been able to offer it. Be, okay, so because the funding came from Jewel settlement dollars through, through the state of Wisconsin Tobacco Prevention Control Program. Um, Tom remembers we were a part of actually trying to apply for a much bigger grant through what was called the Wisconsin Partnership Program. That didn't pan out, but actually we were able to sort of resize the project deliverables. And uh, anyways, we didn't get to do as much as we wanted to do. We're only offering the after school programming one day or yeah, one day a month. We've done three so far and we, like literally no advertising. I think I put it on the PTO Facebook group. I texted a few parents and we came to middle school lunch. We've had 25 kids every time and likely would have more um, if we were more regular, right? Like if we were like every Wednesday or every Friday, for example, it's drop in. And we've kept that really intentionally to not have any barriers about having their parents have to remember to sign them up, et cetera. Um, we only have four more sessions for the pilot program and the funding will, we will exhausted the funding by then. We are looking at applying for, we just learned that there's a Brighter Futures Initiative grant, the same grant that funded what is SPARC in Ashland County. So we're really trying to get Bayfield County to be on board um, and hope that the school district might be willing to join that partnership. Uh, for that for that grant process that's going to happen this September, or excuse me, that RFA comes out sometime this summer. We don't know the date yet. Um, anyways, the kids are really enjoying it. They We've been playing basketball. We've been playing floor hockey. We took them to the ice skating rink while there was still ice. Um, we've been doing art 
and crafts projects. And really, it just feels like they want to be there to hang out with their friends. And so that's been really great. Um, okay. And then really quick, uh, the city council, I'm also, okay, so now I'm going to take off my work hat. Now I'm just me, the person. Um, the city council is going to vote on a possibility for a Washburn bike park on next Monday, the 12th. The 12th. And I just want to let you know that you know how the NICA students came to do their presentation. Mm -hmm. They've been really involved in that process and advocating. So that's really great. And then World Play Day. My kid had so much fun. I wish we could have World Play Day <laughs> every day at school. So maybe we can work on having more World Play Days. Mm -hmm. Thank Thanks, Charmaine. Is there anybody online that wants to? No. There's nobody online. That makes it easy. All right, we'll move on. Um, we don't have the financial reports tonight. Um, committee reports, long range planning. Um, so you heard the presentation um, regarding the building project. And so that was the majority of the long range planning and the questions are on there. Um, we uh, then after that um, time, we had a short, period of time just to review our strategic planning process. It seems like the committee agreed that we would do kind of an in-house strategic planning. We can use CISA as like maybe a consultant during help with some survey and survey development to get community input on our strategic plan. But otherwise, um, the admin team will be able to facilitate um, our strategic initiatives over the next uh, like three to five years. I don't, I don't even know if that's fine, but I think anyone knows. So that's good. <laughs> and, um, and I think we need to ask, and I don't think I need an answer right now, but we have to find out how the board wants to be involved. Like, so should we do a special meeting or should we have you join a long-range planning committee meeting? Um, and I, I think we can decide that. Over. For the strategic planning the strategic part of it. Plan. Okay. Um, and then we just also heard from, um, from a member of that committee, just wanted to make sure that we are very intentional about improving communication over the next like three months. And obviously indefinitely, we always want to mm -hmm. be improving. Um, but but the reflection was we may have missed an opportunity on some uh on some communication regarding our district administrator selection, um, or that we or we could have just improved that process. Um, so knowing that we're going into this referendum and knowing that we're going into big changes for our district. Um, they just want to. They just want to make sure that we have some kind of strategy to improve our communication. Um, I don't really have like a ton of details, uh, but um, but if we want to put that on the agenda in the future, we can talk about that. But um, but it was a that was the that was a summary. Of Thanks. Mm -hmm. Policy committee. Policy committee met. I've reviewed um, not a, a lot of policies. Uh, the spring one is going to be very much. Spring is so tiny nine. It's finally getting to a point where we're going to release Title Line information. We have a section on WASB. So um, a lot of policies will be impacted by that. But for this reading, most of it was language. Mm -hmm. uh, we had some additional sections in uh, 7540 uh, technology. Uh, Cody was able to review his uh, section and, and check those boxes. Um, we looked at non-district supported student activity accounts, district supported activity accounts, and the language that was clarified in those policies. Um, 8700, I think the selection we made was up to two years for uh, expressing milk. Lactating employees. Lactating employees. Policy. Uh, and in 9130 public requests that uh, added or spelled under someone who's questioning um, things that are being taught in the classroom and library materials was added to that policy. So uh, those are just some of the updates that I wanted to highlight. Required language changes. Um, pretty clear for them. All right, and we will be acting on those later. Um, school Improvement Committee. Um, okay, so 
that was another just like kind of review on the data and where we're at. And we're always um, seeing some progress um, in different areas and we get to highlight in, in season this. I guess what I'm kind of taking away from uh, from that update is how that team works so well together. Um, and I really sense that they have a feeling of support from the board and support from the community to do the job that they need to do to make our students uh, proficient in all of, in all of the areas of academics. Um, I did ask, I think we did ask specifically about two things. One was um, where social and emotional learning can play into our students' achievement. Um, and so we had a, a brief discussion about that. And um, and then the other was um, oh just regarding like testing and like you know I think our, our I think our community might be getting a little bit of survey fatigue and so we just kind of wonder if the students are getting a little bit of testing fatigue um, and and there is actually a, like a plan to say hey once we get our feet under us and once we start working with this data we'll really like understand it without having to test the students all the time <laughs> but this really brings up a really great framework or I guess foundation. Um, <laughs> Uh, for for the system of improvement, and so um, so you can really start to see that uh, based on based on the reporting and, and their accomplishing. So it worked to everybody. Nice, thank you. Um, administrative reports. Yeah, I would just add <clears throat> coming out COVID, the, the need for testing and data. <clears throat> that, 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 so, yeah, as we get back to that normal, we're getting the PLC not ready that data to probably take a long time. So we get back to normal time, closer to what we do. Uh, spending time with the administrative team over the next month on the budget. Uh, my goal is to get a budget ready for the summer. Um, staffing decisions will happen in spring through summer, but putting financial situation in where it was going to shape closer to the uh, site of next meeting. Um, the list of some options. There have been some updates. Uh, so I will update my report tonight. We post that in the shared drive as things come out. We get more data, we get more information. Talk to Sandy about reaching out to CSI. We have a chat with Dean next week, getting costs on people services and how that might you know, be impacted in the district. So as I get those, I don't used to be a rolling die, but I'll get to send the report. Uh, truancy plan, working with the county. Um, we had our initial meeting just to map out what that looks like. We are required to visit the largest school in Bayfield County to facilitate that. So, working with Judge Anderson, the district attorney, all the sheriffs and police to come at all the school districts, uh, human services, Bayfield County, um, coming up with our insurance plan to take a look at that. Uh, and then, as we the next five years, we're right in the middle of an Office of Civil Rights report. Uh, it's in a few weeks, it's a collection of data. Um, that they pull from the 21 22 school year. So then they use that data to set current policy. It doesn't make sense, but that's how they do it in the federal government. So we're right in the middle of that. Uh, might take a little longer when we do the building section because everyone's new and they've never done it. So, uh, but I think that will be. Um, we're going to meet with the bus company to finalize our. Contract with the bus company, five year contract was up. Um, I would say that negotiation could be very helpful going forward. Um, we met with Upper Lakes Food uh, today. And we're constantly looking at to improve food service and how we can do it. Um, we met with their uh, regional rep, Becca, who will help us with our menu planning. Right now, I'm just doing the best that I could. We're putting together a menu and we're getting healthier food and ingredients that were real ingredients. Uh, but I might not have taken into consideration the entire week calorie count or this or that or the other thing. So, what Becca's going to do is take kind of what we've been doing, but make sure that we're in compliance with the state department. So, still going to be, you know, healthy and tasting the good, and the kids are going to like it. Um, but we met with them with food service staff today. They also met. Uh, uh, Chef Craig and Chef Craig's going to be on site to help them with their skills so we can get back to more cooking in the kitchen and development of their skill sets so uh, we can really expand what we're offering students moving forward and um, surveying students on what they like 
and then putting a lot of those things on a menu within reason because the yes kids going to be you know chicken nuggets and it's going to be this and that and the other thing. And then also looking at you know a separate menu. The high school really liked what I know they like sweet sweet sour chicken. High school loved it. The elementary not as much. So um, maybe on certain days or you know month high school gets this type of an experience. Elementary will get a different experience. So working with them, but very excited. They seem really excited to work with us. Uh, food service staff seem to be looking forward to getting some that could help with their skill development. That sounds great. I'm excited to share my first um, my first update to share is the visit visit from Governor Evers on Tuesday of this week, and so we were asked for security purposes not to share that out publicly ahead of time, um, but we're very excited and grateful to get the opportunity to have him um, join our building. Um, it was a very short tour and they were on a very tight schedule. So we condensed it as much as we could to show um, all of the things that we're doing from the early learning center all the way up through 12th grade in a very short period of time on a very short tour. Um, but it was a great experience. We got to meet him and his staff at the door and welcome him into the building. We stopped in a couple of classrooms so you could see what learning looks like in action here in Washburn Elementary. Uh, we uh, highlighted the, his purpose for the visit was learning more about student mental health, as well as a specific program, Sources of Strength. And so we highlighted what um, how we support student mental health through um, universal instruction of lifelong learning skills and school counseling, um, through our warm, welcoming classrooms and environments, um, through relationships and student connections. Um, so as we kind of move through the school, we touched on each of those topics, and he got to see general education classrooms, special education classrooms, uh, we went through um, and to show off our five-day 4K program, which is a unique feature that we have. Many other schools in Wisconsin do not. Our early learning center, another unique feature that um, we really are proud of and, and need support to continue. And then went outside and, and showed many of our outdoor learning spaces and um, how important that is in both academic learning and social emotional learning. And uh, I think he, at that point, was really pretty impressed. And um, and, and it was a great because what we heard from the Department of Public Construction when we gave a very similar tour, that one was much longer, um, was just how unique and how special Washburn is. And we heard that from the governor of Wisconsin as well, who is, of course, our former state superintendent. So he knows schools and um, is very in tune with what's happening throughout the state. After that, we came back into the building and met in the library. We had four students from the high school um, share more about the Sources of Strength program. What are the activities that they do? How does it impact um, themselves and their peers and the teachers and the overall school culture. Um, and then to finish out the tour, um, there was an interview with the local TV station as well as the local newspaper. So there's both an article and a clip um, on the news, as well as uh, an article in the daily press. And uh, we gave him a few cards and special things as he left and um, got a follow-up email from his staff thanking us and for that tour. And then if you have a chance to read the Daily Press article, it closes with a couple of quotes from him. Um, and I think this is pretty special. The governor of Wisconsin said this about Washburn. He said, it's a tough time for kids coming out of the pandemic, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, Evers said. Washburn has gone to great lengths to address these issues, Evers said. What they're doing to work with kids is really important. They're doing it at the front end. I learned that if you work at it, there are ways to keep education for kids positive. Tension is down. Anxiety is down. Students can be strong mentally and academically at the same time. It helps them be better kids and better learners, he said. We need to see more of what Washburn is doing across the state of Wisconsin. It was pretty cool to open up and read this morning. Scott, it's like sometimes your governor comes through the they can tell you something they're part of a grand tour. It's just a stop off point. I'm hearing you flew here. And flew back. Saw our school. Yes. Back. He came here for a Washburn. He came here just mm -hmm. which is kind of mm -hmm. I just want to say that Ivy was a star. Mm -hmm. She did great. Mm -hmm. um, Betsy did a very nice interview. She was yeah. she was great. Uh, the high school kids were great. Um, the kids were wonderful. They just were, you know, gathering around him and wanting to shake his hand and talk to him and mm -hmm. ask him questions. And it was really nice. That and I said my favorite part, which they didn't put on the news, which they should have, because that was my favorite part of the whole tour, when they were interviewing him. This little guy about first grade came up. He saw Miss Ivy on the other <laughs> side, and he skipped right there. He skipped. He was so happy. He was skipping along to go tell her what a great day yep. he had in class. And it's right there the interview. 
Yeah, yeah, through, yeah, right yeah. through the governor's interview. It was adorable. I wish they had put that part on TV because yeah. it was great. I mean, he was, you could just see how happy he was. Yeah, it was just great. It was, that was a, it was a great moment. Uh, just a few other updates I have for us. Um, at this point in the school year, I usually give an AGR or achievement gap reduction update. Um, so that's funding we receive through the state um, for meeting one or more of three different strategies. One is class size reduction. One is instructional coaching, and the other one is tutoring, or what we call tier three interventions. And that applies to kindergarten, first, second, and third. And we utilize um, one or more of those strategies in all of those classrooms and um, try to implement all three strategies in all those classrooms. And um, we also set a goal to report back out on that. And our goal is that all students in those grade levels will make one year's growth or more academically, and they will we will increase proficiency levels. Those are the same two goals that we have for our school improvement committee and that work, which really focuses more on third through 12th because that's the state testing age range. And so it's really nice. The combination between AGR and the school improvement work makes it a comprehensive goal and school improvement plan district wide. Um, and yeah, just an emphasis on early intervention, how important it is. So research shows that the intervention, the time it takes to work one on one with a student on a specific skill is dramatically smaller the younger that they are and how important that is to support our students in developing those skills. And although it's outside of that report, that is why we're, we're focusing on such explicit phonics instruction to develop really strong readers right from the get-go. Um, same thing with math instruction. We've done a lot of work on what does that math program look like? How do we ensure all students are developing the foundational skills that they need? And we're even to the point where we have data not testing data from like the iPad or the computer, but just one-on-one -on -one testing data that shows what skills kids are working on to the point that as new students come to us, we can do a quick check-in with them, see what they're missing and ensure that they get the support they need right away. And it doesn't extend um, longer and show up in gaps later on in, in our older grades, which we're seeing in some of our, our data. So um, that's just a quick update on AGR. And then I'll give a second update at the end of the school year as we continue to increase those proficiency levels. Um, just a few other updates. We have a leap into learning family event at the elementary on leap day. We try to do one or more really big fun family events. Uh, we used to call them title one events or math and literacy night, but it's going to be all different kinds of learning. Families are welcome. Um, everybody, including the student, um, will have free food. It's going to be sandwiches that they can then build to shape like a frog for the leap into learning theme. Um, and then classrooms all over the school will be open. We'll have a little map where they can see and they can come into any of those classrooms and it's everything from some of that phonics instruction. What does this look like? If you remember the presentation Amelia Olson provided earlier in the year, mm -hmm. she'll have a video running so families can see that. And then some of those examples um, out on the floor that they can practice them. Um, we're doing scavenger hunts on book genres. There's math activities. Um, there's build your own hopscotch. So some of the physical wellness. And so it's going to be a really fun event, free for all families. And we're excited about that. And then the last updates I have are just related to some of the other uh, committees that we have. So curriculum council just met yesterday. We always review district updates and two of those updates are technology committee and professional development committee because those two committees have sort of combined with curriculum council and mostly because all of the work with school improvement is aligning so closely, it makes sense to work in that group. Um, and so for professional development committee, we're working on a staff survey as well as the school improvement efforts, which those two things combined will impact our professional development calendar for next year. Um, for technology, uh, we're ready sort of in fourth quarter into the summer and next year to review the mission, vision, values, and goals of that technology committee, the when, the why, the how. Um, we're also keeping an eye on screen time. That's an ongoing priority, especially as we move further past the pandemic. Um, that's something that is a priority in our community. We see the importance, but we also see the balance um, and you'll notice that comes up in parent advisory committee as well. Connection between technology and board policies and even a, a family event in the future, like we did in the past with digital citizenship. So um, Cody also talked a little bit about some options on um, supporting students with switching from Chromebooks to laptops at the secondary level. And so it would be potentially um, iPads, Chromebooks and laptops. It would open up more opportunities for our upper level students. It would also provide strong experiences with three different uh, platforms and devices um, and would also make sense because right now our Chromebooks are extending for I think it's seven years which is just a little bit past our life expectancy and we don't want that to negatively impact our oldest students so we're starting to just explore some of those different options to ensure that we're always providing our students with the best opportunities and learning 
Um, and then ongoing cybersecurity. So we had assessments today, I believe. And then we also have professional development opportunities. And I will share out those dates, and Cody will too, with the board um, for all staff to ensure that we have those uh, that professional development in place. Um, Curriculum Council also worked on just PLCs. Uh, we talked about data and kind of moving away from some of those bigger standardized tests, but that doesn't mean moving away from data. That actually means increasing data. But now we're starting to use Achieve 3000. So we look at all the star data, we see that as an overview, but then we compare it with Achieve 3000 or um, Lexia or Alex or any of the programs. And of course, what the teachers are seeing in the classroom on a daily basis. So we increase data. And as we kind of be mindful about slowly and meaningfully decreasing some of that uh, formal assessments. Uh, the other committee update was parent advisory. So this was the whole group. We had some subcommittees previously. Now this was whole group. We reviewed um, two of our focus areas, which one of them was behavior, discipline, and accountability. So we shared that out with the whole group. Um, we also talked about food service, really positive feedback on the changes in food service that were made. I even shared the, the downsides and the cost increase, uh, but just really positive feedback um, from that. Community. That could be a retirement career for you, you know? Oh, welcome. <laughs> uh, and so we're... It's true. It's true. Yep. And they, absolutely. Yes. And the changes in the menu, um, offering oatmeal, we had a yogurt parfait, so different things like that too, I think. So the community felt really positive about that. Um, we also did a quick review on school safety, the updated buzzer systems, and parents were grateful for that. And then our next agenda focus is going to be academic achievement. But rather than moving on from those topics, they're not done. They're always going to continue forward. We're actually going to focus on academic achievement within those categories. So behavior, food service, school safety, screen time are all going to be within that academic achievement uh, big picture. So. Uh, the last one was just wellness committee. It was a lot of committee meetings. It's been a busy month. Uh, wellness committee, we started off just to kind of get things up and running. Um, we focused a little bit on staff wellness and some of those sort of easy wins. So we had some social events, um, spirit wear sales, some fun activities, potlucks like that. And we're now moving into some of those deeper, more meaningful topics, especially related to student wellness. And so uh, reviewing the wellness policy each year. Um, looking at student wellness and student data, perhaps creating student profiles to ensure strong connections and um, those connections extend from year to year and um, just ongoing access to resources for students and families. So we'll continue to address those in the quarterly meetings that we have coming up. Too much in the to be very restrictive on who can go in and alter, change grades, change attendance. Uh, the system set up was someone could log in if they were a, what do we call it? What do we call it? Super system. user. System admin, the super user. Super user. And they could actually go in and log in as the person, the person could not make changes. We took away that right to figure out okay, who moves what. So Cody's working with Skyward and staff to get them to what everything they need and limiting those system administrators to one or two people. That's it. We had multiple. Most didn't even know they were. Um, but we've had some security that we need to clamp down. Also shared all of everything, everything that went in the board packet in terms of budget, I also shared with the staff of curriculum council so they know what we're looking for. Uh, their CPI and their insurance is worth it. So we can share all that information. So staff, uh, business question, uh, what they, they see. Right. Thank you. Um, when you were talking about the, the truancy council that they're doing, could we get some numbers on truancy and what those look like? Where it's, um, Angie's not. I, I so, see that. She's like, even though it's school. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. We're going to move on to the um, consent agenda. There's just three items. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Discussion items. Legislative advocacy update. 
and nothing other than just the title of something to keep our uh, designs going. Okay. CISA 12 update. We didn't have a meeting in January. Okay. This is going to go fast. Yeah. <laughs> um, Washburn Educator Council. Um, reports and the shared director of the board. We're working through the various things that have been identified. It's a great way that we can talk about things, share things, fix things, uh, but sharing with the board. So you're knowing what the concerns are and how we're addressing them. Great to go to venue tonight, but he's playing trauma over to close. It looks like there was a lot on that conversation. There's a, but like it, it's good conversation. It's, it's, if there's a concern and anybody who supports that, construction staff, administration team, you know, small business. Good. All right. Individual action agendas. You want to just move on through here with motions? And... I moved to call for a vote to approve the FLA for the FLA. Second. 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 I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I need to approve FNI for this one. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I move to approve the policy updates as listed. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. I move to approve Danielle Nepstead as Assistant Forensics Advisor. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I'll second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And now we need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Very good. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>